especially 250 passing. Do you have an ideal situation like that? Or are you more run, more pass? You know, I think it goes from game to game. And that's one of the things that Les and I had talked about in the interview process. I've been in games as an offensive coordinator where we've thrown 56 passes. We've won the game. I've been in games where we threw eight passes against Nebraska in 1998 against the Blackshirts. They were the number two defense in the country uh, and uh, number two team in the country at that time. And in that game, I actually called 22 straight runs, but those were three touchdown drives. So the bottom line is score points. You know, whatever it takes to score points and utilize your players. So, you know, like I said, I've been in games too where I've thrown it 20 straight times. It just depends on what the defense is doing to try to, to stop you and being able to be good enough at both throwing the football and running the football to take advantage of what the defense is, is taking away or, or leaving you the opportunity to attack. So ideally from a game plan standpoint, when you talk about balance, yeah, you, people often go to this many yards of rushing or this many yards of passing. Where, I'm, where I talk about balance more is balance with your players, your personnel groups, getting your players onto the field, putting them in a position to make plays and doing a good job of that. And then also within the formations, you know, having enough balance. So if we're running a play, we have a play action pass off of it. If we have a run that uh, is a uh, stretch run outside, maybe we've got a shot pass off of it or a naked pass off of it, naked play action pass off of it. If we've got a strong down the field passing game, we want to be good in the screen game and the draw game to keep those big guys from uh, pressuring the passer and doing things to move the launch point of the quarterback. And I'm sure as we go throughout spring practice, we'll talk more about those specific schemes. But doing enough, again, to put you in a position to challenge the defense and yet, by the same token, be very conceptual for the quarterback and for the rest of the guys on offense. Coach, what are you going to do with the terminology? Are you going to go back to what LSU has been using? Are you going to implement a whole new thing? That's what? a really good question. And we're, we're going to keep the same terminology that we've used before. And Les and I talked about that. The easiest thing for me to do is come in and learn the terminology instead of teach terminology to 80 people, being new coaches, new players in terms of the way I view them. Uh, not new to, certainly to the program, but new in terms of me stepping in. So I, I felt like that was the easiest thing to do, and I've done that a couple of different times. When I was at Texas A&M in 2000, as the offensive coordinator, I went to the Buffalo Bills, and we used the West Coast offense in 2001, the Bill Walsh Bible. I mean, if it said it, it was every word verbatim. The next year, we, Kevin Gilbride came in as our offensive coordinator. We changed completely, changed the system completely, and went to more of the Ron Earhart, Pittsburgh Steelers, um, Bill Parcells when they were together at the New York Giants, that type, and then Kevin had taken that with, with uh, Coach Coughlin down at Jacksonville, so we used that system. Then the next year, we moved to Tulsa, and I was the head coach at Tulsa. I brought Charlie Stubbs in as our offensive coordinator who had been at Alabama and been with my dad at Oregon State, and we totally changed the terminology again. So really when it comes down to it, football is football. But you, what you want to do is make sure that it's consistent, it's concise, and we just felt like the easiest thing right now in the transition, particularly with the time that we have, being starting practice March the 11th, I can come in and learn the terminology. And these guys have to go to class. The players have to go to class every day. I'll just be sitting in my apartment at night trying to figure out if it's I right or I left. Coach, where do you see offense going in the next five years? A lot of affinity for the spread. Right. Can you talk about the combination of what Les wants to do and spreading people out, how you can implement that to be balanced as well as success? You know, it's, that's good because it, it's almost like fashion. You know, it's cyclical. It's about a 25-year cycle. I remember... Um, you know, 25 years ago, people were starting to do more single wing offense type things, and that's really what the Wildcat is. You know, the Wildcat is single wing offense, and so I think you're seeing that come back. I think one of the things that you'll start to see now, too, particularly in this league, is how many hits do you want your quarterback to take? To me, that's one of the big things. So, yeah, you're running him, he's doing things outside the pocket, speed out, whether it's speed option, whether it's the quarterback design runs like you're going to have out of the single wing or out of the wildcat formation. But the bottom line, particularly when you're playing in this league, is how many times can that guy get hit? That's why you don't see that in the National Football League. There's not a lot of guys designed run, design runs for quarterbacks in the National Football League just because of the punishment that you have to take. So going back a little bit to the, to the premise of your question, I think you're going to start to see more <laughs> protection things, max protection things, where the quarterback's going to get protected a little bit and have a chance to throw the ball down the field. I think that's one of the things that we like here is, is obviously, like I said before, couple in a very, very strong running game with a strong play action, shot passing type of uh, attack. And so uh, I, I think you're going to see it kind of come back a little bit to where after a while these quarterbacks are going to get thumped up and they're going to say, they're going to walk into the offensive coordinator's office on Monday morning and say, hey, coach, how about a few more of those seven and eight man protections? 
The evolution of the wildcat formation, what's your philosophy on using one of your better athletes? No, I, I think it's a heck of a formation because, again, in offense, you want to make everybody account for all 11 players on the field. And for a long time, what had happened is people didn't have to account for the quarterback in the running game. Uh, so whether it's a quarterback actually doing those type of things or it's another player doing it, I know Spencer's very capable of doing that. And he's also a guy that plays baseball and uh, had, a, had a huge play, I think, was it the uh, Auburn game, the halfback pass, if I'm correct on that one? I was watching on TV. That was a while ago, so I'm trying to remember. But So I, I think... You want to make the defense defend the quarterback in the running game. So whether that's the quarterback actually running it or whether it's the guy who has a different jersey number on that's playing the position of quarterback at that particular moment, uh, that's something we're definitely going to be interested in looking at.